Sadly, it was one of the biggest sci-fi film failures in history. Despite being based on the massively successful 1965 novel by Frank Herbert, the eagerly anticipated film adaptation of Dune was a critical and commercial disappointment. But would the film have worked better in black and white? Now why would that be a consideration? Because that was how it was originally intended to be. The question is, would it have worked? Well, let's find out together. This is Science 5. The desire for Dune to be adapted for the big screen has been well documented over the decades. From the aborted attempt by Alejandro Jodorowsky in the 1970s, through to the version we finally saw in the mid 80s. Dune has always had a troubled cinematic history mainly due to its vast scope. But the 1984 version was particularly difficult due to the constant and ongoing conflicts between the producer Rafaela De Laurentiis and visionary director David Lynch. For her part, De Laurentiis was keen to make a typical mainstream Hollywood film intended for those audiences who were already savouring the massively popular 1980s sci-fi movie craze. Whilst Lynch, being an auteur, was looking at creating something more in line with his individual and artistic tastes. Unfortunately, this conflict would reach a point whereby Lynch would eventually distance himself from the film after it was completed, and even today will not acknowledge or discuss it. Amidst all the production turmoil was Lynch's desire to bypass the modern filmmaking practice by shooting the film in black and white, as he had done with great effect for both The Elephant Man and Eraserhead. As many cinematic historians have noted, black and white allows for a more atmospheric feel to a film whereby light and shadow play an integral part of the image and as such allows for greater depth, artistry and style. Hence the term film noir, which can be translated to black or dark film. As to be expected, Lynch's plan to film Dune in black and white was immediately overturned by De Laurentiis, who was concerned it would alienate a large portion of the movie-going, colour-loving public. As it turned out, the film, despite being shot in colour, intentionally uses mostly dull, dark and drab tones, including a lot of black, while splashes of colour appear sparingly, which actually supports the oppressive universe the film is set in. Somewhat ironically, one of the major plot points of the film are the Fremen, who have blue within blue eyes, which would have been difficult to visualise had the film been in black and white. But what if Lynch had had his way and shot the film in monochrome? Would it have worked? Would the film have found a new and appreciative audience simply because it was prepared to do something other films of the time would never have even contemplated? Moreover, would the audience have been more forgiving of the complex and difficult story, knowing that what they were watching was not just another Hollywood movie, but instead a serious art piece featuring a complicated and well-crafted narrative? Alas, we'll never know, but we can at least speculate on how Lynch's original version may have looked. So what we've done is taken some sample shots from the film and added a black and white filter to them. Though keep in mind, actual black and white movies were specifically crafted for that format both in lighting design and costume colour, which clearly isn't a factor here. However, simply adding a black and white filter to the footage is not enough to achieve any notable results. As seen here, the image is mostly grey with no depth or substance at all. To combat this, we have to, somewhat amusingly, colour grade it. The process for colour grading black and white film can be rather complex depending on the desired results, especially if attempting to emulate the classic 50s noir look. However, an approximate simulation can be achieved by simply darkening the blacks, boosting the whites and enhancing the greys, depending on whether the image represents day or night. Ultimately, the aim is to make the shadows harsher and the whites brighter. If done well, the final result will not only feature far more depth, but it will be pleasing to the eye due to the varying contrasts. In these examples, which are just using very basic techniques, Dune already has a distinct, classic 1950s look to it, and it works. But would it have saved the film from commercial and critical annihilation? Possibly not. But there's no denying Lynch was onto something when he first suggested it. After all, can you at least imagine one critic saying, I really didn't understand the movie, but geez, it just looked good. See you next time.